Hello my dear Switch Watchers, it's Jordan here. Now last week I had a little bit of free time and after the rather decent success of the Eastwood review that I did, I thought I'd put up another poll to ask our YouTube members which late ass review they wanted next. And with 35% of the vote, the winner was Love Esquire. Yes, I was surprised too, and now we know who all the pervs are. So yeah, it is a bit late, but here's my review of Love Esquire. If you want to take part in the next vote, then click that join button below the video. You can do that for the lowest tier. The next poll will be up shortly after this video goes live. And if you're new here, then consider subscribing because we're giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED model to one of you once we get to 100,000 subscribers. So don't miss out. So Love Esquire is a visual novel mixed in with an RPG. The basic premise is that our nameable main character, uh, obviously I had to go with who else but Juan, on his birthday of all days he's been told he's getting shipped off to war with only a survival chance of about 20%. He's worried about what eats away to every young man out there, will he die a virgin and also what's gonna happen to his cow Bessie. Priorities. Cows before house, as the really posh people would say? I don't know. First and foremost, this story is about being funny. It does have its tender moments, but it's rare that there's not some kind of humorous situation going on, or innuendo or charming vulgarities going on here. You don't play this for the story, you play it for the funnies. Now when it comes to comedy in games, I tend to be very particular about it because, you know, game developers aren't usually known for creating good stories, never mind good funny stories, even when they try. Very few games have had an impact on me with their humour. I pretty much wear like a Kevlar vest for the funnies to bounce off. But you know what? Love Esquire, it tickled me quite a lot. I really appreciate the rather frank dialogue, especially from the MC. I mean, he might sound like an unlikable weasel, but I love his casual bluntness. He reminds me of myself. Obviously not the unlikable weasel part, I hope. While it's hardly laugh a minute, the jokes hit more often than not. And even if you don't laugh out loud most of the time, you'll still have that shit-eating childish smirk on your face thanks to all the cussing, lewd suggestions and ridiculous situations. The ineptitude of Juan and his mentor Hugh is genuinely, charmingly funny. My dear hapless Juan has five ladies in his sight with only a handful of months to get laid. You have Amy who's an adoptive sister, it's kinda weird but try not to think about it. You have the nurse Giselle, who is a lady of few words, full of sarcasm, and pretty much zero time for nonsense. She's my kind of girl. Although, of the bunch, she's probably the one most likely to murder you in your sleep. Some people find that sexy. There's Princess Beatrice, the haughty ruler of the kingdom, Kamala, a visiting exotic regal from the kingdom that you're going to be shipped off to, and Vel, the classic small but packs quite the punch lady who's quite fond of beer. Who will you seduce? Or more like a, whose bosom will you worm your way into? How about all five at once? This one is of a rare example of a modern dating or management sim. You walk around the small town, every move you make takes up time. You wake up at 6am and make the most of the time at your disposal. You'll see the ladies in various locations around the town, you walk to them, talk with them to increase your relationship with them and you can even bribe them with gifts found around town or buy them from the shop to make them like you even more. Each girl has different likes and dislikes, but they all have one thing in common, and that is they all mildly like Bessie's freshly squeezed milk. Now that, that's romance. There's tons of events, dialogue and character developments here, and while pretty much none of it is relevant to the main plot, aside from just getting to know the girls, it is surprisingly cozy. This is really, it's about the girls and Juan making himself look a complete tit. Now one of the big selling points of this visual novel is that it's part JRPG, yes that just pricked up your ears, and while like almost all VNs that have extra gameplay stuff, it's all very basic. Along with wooing the ladies, you'll also need to level up your battle prowess, and then take on waves of monsters with your knight Hugh doing most of the dirty work. It's actually rather tactical, more like a puzzle game since you only have a small amount of abilities and turns to use, and unless you're somehow overpowered, there's generally only one or maybe two ways of doing things. You have to make the right choices at the right time. Should you heal Hugh, should you take a hit for him, maybe pick up some loot, or cheer on Hugh to do a special attack. Really, it's a very fine balance which does work in its favour when, you know, the mechanics are this simple. It makes it tense and thoughtful, rather than being bland by default of its simplicity. 
There are 15 levels you'll gradually take on with ever increasing difficulty of monsters. Due to this, you probably won't be doing it all in one go. You'll probably take on like one or two levels every few hours, depending on if you try to balance the dating aspects with leveling up your strength. But it's something you definitely have to do as the end is also part of the end of this game. Lover Squire is actually all done rather well. It is simple but incredibly addictive and I found myself being in a never ending loop of just doing one more day. It's incredibly easy just to blitz through hours by going through the quick days. And it's not just addictive because it's quick to go through them but because it's rewarding as well. CGs are fairly far between which is slightly unfortunate but the scenes and the talks are definitely worth it. The production value is excellent too. Yes, the CGs may be far apart, but the quality is really good. They're slightly animated as well. The general sprites are great as well, and the backgrounds, fantastic. The music here is pretty top-notch, and the voice acting is professional. I'm very impressed with the production quality here. So, I've been playing Love Esquire while also making my way through. Very slowly, it's kind of sister title from the same developer called The Letter. Now, both are very good, but actually very, very different from each other. But they do share one thing in common, and that is dodgy accents. Now, I don't know what it is with these Filipino developers hiring American people to do British accents, but I find this cultural appropriation offensive. Actually, I don't give a shit, but it's kind of funny. The British accents are fairly bad for the most part. I mean, Amy, Amy, she was doing just fine until they brought out the good old herbal trap. Americans just don't like pronouncing that H. Even when they're trying to do a British accent, they still say herbal. Like, uh, like they've got like a twitch or something. Herbal, 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 herbal. Enjoy the word. Enjoy it. Don't herbal. Having a stroke or something. I suppose it is admirable though, and probably any people who aren't actually British won't even notice. I mean, that Dick Van Dyke fella, he did a stand-up job on Mary Poppins. Sure, I am joking about it, but overall, it is a commendable job. They really tried hard with the production of the voices, even if it doesn't always land. I mean, aside from the inner monologue, everything is voice acted. And the main character is a particular treat since he's just so over the top and funny. You can see whoever he is, is quite the pro, even if he is purposefully weaselly annoying and over dramatic. So this game is available digitally and physically, at least for the time being. This is one of those Play Asia exclusive physical releases, so it is limited in its nature. There's a standard edition as well as a collector's edition, which includes a double soundtrack CD, which is great. If you want to own this physically, then consider using the links below in the description. That's where you'll be able to find it and grab a copy for yourself and support us at the same time. Plus, if you click our links, you can also get a very nice 5% discount if you use our current discount code, Get physical when checking out. That's all one word. Get physical for five percent of any physical item from Play Asia. Obviously, this code will change in the future. So yeah, if it has changed, check the description, and I'm sure I will update you with the latest code. Obviously, this is a limited release. So if you're watching this in the future for some reason, then you may only be able to go digitally. On the eShop, it's priced at 25 US dollars, 20 pounds in the UK, and 21 euros in Europe. Obviously, those are probably the main regions that you guys are watching from. But if you want to save a little bit of cash digitally on the Hong Kong eShop, it's a surprisingly decent 109 Hong Kong dollars, which is about half the price of the other regions. Now, $109 is a bit awkward in Hong Kong since adding money by the eShop, you can only add like 100 at a time or 300. But if you took my advice about saving money on Eastward on the Hong Kong eShop, you probably have enough extra coin in your Hong Kong wallet to get by. Check the links below, there's some Hong Kong eShop credit there too. Overall, I have to admit, I knew to expect some kind of like tongue-in-cheek, lewd humor, a little bit funny, but I was genuinely surprised at how funny this game actually was. It's a bit puerile, but ascends cheapness. There's some pretty decent comedy in here mixed in with an addictive dating sim and very basic JRPG. There's surprising production gone into this with great art, music, fully voiced, which is good if you're not from the UK, and I was really surprised by this. Is it the greatest? No, but it is really good at accomplishing what it sets out to do. An 8 out of 10. 
All right, many thanks for watching this late review of Love Esquire. If you want to vote for the next episode, consider joining our YouTube memberships, like our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Elisa, Punkadusa, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Soren, Robotech Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Government Fat Cat, Isa, They, Mental Traveler, and Grancer. Plus you, yeah, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, then I want to know who you are. Ah, leave me a love heart emoji in the comments because I just want to feel loved. It's got nothing to do with Love Esquire. Please check out some of our other stuff. We've got a lot of content for you. Physical releases on Monday, digital discounts on Sunday, usually. Plus a lot of other content that any Switch fan will enjoy. We'll see you guys over there. Have a good one. Aside from the inner monologue, everything is voice acted, and Juan is as weaselly, annoying, overdramatic as he is in real life. <laughs> Sorry, Juan. I'll change that one, I think.